Hello and welcome to uh, this review of the D1 uh, Milano Chronograph Nox NOX, um, which is one of their uh, newest releases uh, on their Chronograph collection and a really, really cool, uh, funky, sporty and colorful design. Um, I'll be going through the specs, the design, uh, the quality, um, have a look at it on the wrist and then have a, a short conclusion. Um, and yeah, this is unscripted. Uh, it's unscripted, it's one take, uh, so bear with me, and uh, if you want a full written review with close-ups, go visit hypenstyle.fr, I write in English and French, uh, but yeah, let's just dive right into it. So, uh, specs, we're looking at a 41 and a half uh, width size here, and a 10.7 millimeter height, um, which I think is really, really good. Uh, dimensions it's it's masculine it's sporty not too big not too small and pretty uh pretty sits pretty not too tall on the wrist which is perfect especially for a quartz chronograph um we have uh 50 meters uh, water resistance uh it weighs in at around uh, 170 grams which is pretty good weight as well it's got a sapphire with ar coating and this whole thing is run by a psycho vk 63 which is basically a mega quartz movement so uh, what that means is you have a base, um, the timekeeping module is basically quartz, but then on top of that you have a mechanical chronograph, um, which basically enables you to have a fluid uh, chronosecond time like this, which is already really, really cool, um, and an instant reset as well, just like on mechanical chronographs. So kind of best of both worlds, you get the long um, power, well, the long power reserve, the battery life, uh, and uh, accuracy and consistency and also price level of quartz, but with the feel of a mechanical chronograph. And specifically, the chrono pushers have this nice click feedback, which is what we, well, what I and most watch enthusiasts love about mechanical chronographs. So really best of both worlds. Let me just dry off my fingerprints here. There we go. Um, so design-wise, um, D1 Milano has a very consistent design let's call it image or philosophy. Um, they have this very distinctive bezel. I think that's really what distinguishes them. And then the integrated bracelet usually also runs across in their models. Now we can talk about the popularity of integrated bracelets and, <laughs> and angular uh, bezels as well. Um, specifically the Royal Oak chronographs, the Royal Oak watches, and also Patek Philippe Nautiluses, et cetera, et cetera. This is just very hyped design. So I can understand they went into this. Um, they started in 2013. So uh, they didn't really jump on the wave when it was the highest. Um, and it's quite distinctive look. So they're not really trying to copy uh, the Royal Oaks. They have this very distinctive bezel, especially the inward angle here, which is pretty interesting. There's only a very few polished elements as well. Um, and yeah, kind of cool sporty look that is trendy, but still is unique and very much unique to D1 Milano. And for this specific model, which is my favorite chronograph. And the reason for that is their previous models had this, these chrono pushes were kind of this shape here, which I really didn't like. Uh, and I thought that they ruined the watch because the rest of it was really cool. And they finally integrated them in a much cooler fashion here with these guards and this cool button. Um, so I'm really happy that they are doing that right now. And I love the orange button versus the silver one here polished. This is also a cool design touch that of course you can find again, the orange on the chrono hands and the 24 hour hand as well here, which basically just tells you the, the time, you know, in the 24 hour setting. So not really useful. You can't really set it separately. Um, Psycho, do something about that. It would be cool if we had a GMT function on this, but we don't, but hey. Um, another cool thing that, yeah, that I should have mentioned maybe earlier is this blue coating they have on this watch, which is really special, very dark, almost a subtle coating. Mimics and reminds me of the ceramic watches on some higher end models. Um, of course, this is not ceramic, but it's coated. It's got this nice, bead blasted textured finish, which uh, you can only, so there's only actually these parts on the bezel and the buttons that are polished. Everything else has this bead blasted treatment from the hands to the hour indices and the rest of the watch. So really cool and kind of subtle, subdued design in my opinion. And then a really cool thing as well as the, the focus here, the sub dials have three distinctive different colors. So this kind of blue turquoise, light blue, and then dark blue, reminding me of the Zenith Chronomaster, I think they're famous for that. That watch uh, has the, the three different uh, subdials. Uh, I really like it because it's subtle, um, but still funky and different. Uh, the sunburst effect as well kind of brings it all together and makes the watch play with the light. Huge fan of the date window, which has the dark blue background as well. So we're not even looking at black. We're actually looking at the really good color matching, which is just nice. I mean, we don't want that white 
date aperture to stick out. It just sticks out too much. And it's already asymmetrical. We don't want to bring it, uh, bring too much attention to it. So bravo, uh, D1 Milano. I think they nailed this design. I think it's a good size. It's a funky, aggressive, sporty chronograph with a, yeah, a different different model, a different watch you don't see every day. And I get a lot of comments on this, mostly because of the color. People think it's a ceramic watch and they kind of have to look a bit closer to understand what it is and a lot of questions. So um, definitely, um, yeah, definitely a, a showstopper, I would say. Now, what about the quality? What do you get for your money? So this watch goes for, the watch goes for around 500, a little less than 500 euros, so a little bit, little bit more than 500 in US dollars. And I've been reviewing another one of their watches a few years back. And first of all, D1 Milano has upped their game in terms of quality, specifically the bracelet is more fluid. It is, of course, rattly, um, which you would expect in this price level, but it's much more fluid and comfortable. Uh, it has beveled edges. The tolerances are better as well. I remember I seeing some of these middle links on the older models being a bit higher than others, and the tolerances here are much better. Uh, the finishing of the case overall is nice. These sharp angles here, nice and sharp, but not too sharp, not machined. You can still enjoy the feeling. Um, the chrono pushers, not too much wiggle. Feels good when you press them. Some some of these VK movements, I've seen these on watches. Some of them, it's really hard to press. You kind of have to press really hard to activate the chrono, which is a bit annoying. And here it's quite easy, I would say. But we also only have five atoms, 50 meters water resistance. So there's not too much going on in this button here. Uh, the crown as well, easy to pop out and in, I would say, for day changing. Uh, let's see here. Boop. I don't have a lot of nails, so it's a bit harder for me, but still. Doesn't have too much wobble. Easy to, to change the time, etc., etc. The date. Um is perfectly centered in its aperture. Very important, I hate when that's not the case. And pretty much everything else is nice and centered. So quite happy with the overall finish and quality of this watch for this price range. Uh, I think you're not, it's not extremely, um, it's not a huge price versus quality ratio, but I think you're definitely getting your money's worth with this, especially considering all the custom elements and treatments this has to go through. Um, so yeah, quality wise, it's a pretty good deal. Um, and yeah, let's have a look at this on my wrist. And I'll have to take off my, I'm wearing a Psycho Flightmaster today. Kind of a tool watch mood. Let's put this on my 17 centimeter circumference wrist. I don't know what that is in inches, but you can do the math yourselves. And we can see here it's, again, I like them to wear them a bit loose. Um, as you can see here, I don't mind this looseness. Um, and on my 17 centimeter circumference wrist, they, it looks good. It's big. It's sporty, but not too much. The flatness here, the 10.7 millimeters, kind of helps it bring together. A bit top heavy, but not too much. Um, and yeah, overall, I think this would fit anyone from 14, maybe 15 centimeters and above. So pretty much most men's wrists are covered here, uh, which is really nice. Um, and as you can see, yeah, it just has a very distinctive sporty look on my wrist. So I, I really, really love this watch. It looks really good, especially in the sunlight. The sunburst here doesn't doesn't bring pretty well under these lights, but yeah. very, very happy with the size, I would say. And for some reason, it looks a bit smaller, the chrono. Um, the, the, the crown is pr pretty flat, and this kind of gives it a little bit more, not width, but kind of overall wrist present with these buttons sticking out uh, as aggressively as they do. So yeah, pretty happy with that. So in conclusion, this D1 Milano Chronographo Nox is a really good chronograph and I think the best one they've done so far and I hope they are going to stop creating the previous models with the weird buttons that I don't love too much and start producing this model in much more different colorways perhaps brushed metal different version of it would be really really nice to see uh, you can also get this hopefully also on a rubber strap as well so kind of kind of lean into this kind of design and model would be I think preferable in my opinion um, and yeah, overall, I can recommend D1 Milano. Uh, I think they're doing a great job and you get your money's worth. It's not crazy uh, value ratio here. We're not looking at these crazy specked out Hong Kong micro brands, but we're definitely getting our money's worth and something unique, fun and colorful. So yeah, um, have a look at hypenstyle.fr if you want the full written review. I've got close up images of this watch. Um, yeah, I would say the, the few, if we can go through some pros and cons quickly here, one of the few things that I do miss on this watch as well is loom. I would have loved to see some loom on it, but uh, yeah, I'm a loom freak. I love that. And it would have been nice to have some loomed indices, of course. Um, but yeah, if you like this unscripted review, please subscribe, like, comment, and have a lovely day.